Hello everyone, how are you today? It is Creative Coffee Cafe Thursday. So if you're just joining me, um, I am your host, Brooke Spagard, and today's guest is Rachel. I, some people would say it Rachel or maybe Rochelle, you never know. <laughs> it's, wow. it's said Rachel, yeah, it's just spelled funny. <laughs> Well, at least you have a last name today that I'm not going to try and have like a French um, pronunciation to it. Blackmore is very cut and dry. Very, yeah, very. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm excited to catch up with Rachel because her and I connected. We were just saying it felt like a long time ago, um, but we connected and started chatting about how content and storytelling is what helps you set yourself apart and helps you be more successful. Um, in any of your marketing, but I guess specifically social media. So during these Creative Coffee Cafe Thursdays, I invite awesome people like uh, Rachel on with me. And we invite others to kind of sit around the table, um, have a cup of coffee or your lunch. Join the conversation, please. If you are just uh, tuning in or logging on at any time, let us know you're here. Say hi. We like to talk to people. That's why we do this live. Um, but without any further ado, I would like to welcome her to the table today, and I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about herself, and then you'll see one of the reasons why I invited her on today. So, well, welcome. Awesome. Thanks for taking your time out to be with us today. Yeah, thank you, Brooke. I It was an exciting time to meet you and get to talk to you and find uh, a kindred spirit out there in the marketing world. Sometimes it's hard to to really find those people who understand uh, and, and really have a passion for content and are good at it. And I was I was really excited to find you. <laughs> so so I'm glad to be on here. Um, yeah, I had I, I've owned businesses for the past about 13 years or so. I had brick and mortar, two brick and mortar stores and uh, were able to be very successful in uh, in areas in a lot of areas. I, I tripled the membership within the first year of owning the second one, um, really created a following of people who were interested in what I was writing and, and the social media and uh, all the kinds of different advertising that I was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. But the end of the story is that I ended up selling one uh, business and closing the other. We, we went business bankrupt and, uh, and personally bankrupt. And the reason is in the last few, in the last three quarters that I owned the businesses, I got this idea, everything kind of social media marketing and marketing and advertising was really booming at that time. And it was, it was kind of pay to play, put as much money as you can into it, get the biggest reach, throw stuff out there, be in front of people, do the noise, do all of that and you win. And it's a lie. Uh, that's not how it, this is not how it works. Thank um, you. Thank <laughs> you for saying that that's somewhat of a lie because I feel like um, people feel like if they just throw money at it and they boost every single post that gets a little bit of reaction or engagement, that that is going to help them grow their business and their sales. And it's, that's just like the tiniest little piece of the puzzle. Right? It is, it is, it, it, it is a piece of the puzzle. So it's important that people are engaging, that you're boosting, that the, your your reach is good. It is a small portion of that. And if you dump, you dump, you know, for me, the last quarter, I spent $15,000 in, in marketing in the last quarter uh, for my business. It, it was my last 15000 at the time. <laughs> so that was all I had. But I kept, all I kept hearing was, you just need more reach. You just need more people. You just need this and followers and all of this stuff. And I think even from then, which was years ago to now, it's only gotten worse. I think that it's a lot harder even than it was then to hear the message that you and I are saying is, is there is strategy involved in this. There is good content involved in this. There is planning and execution. And it's not just about throw. Uh, when we talked last time, I told you I coined this word blurbage out, throwing this blurbage out that, that you're just posting and make sure you post, you know, 10 times on Twitter and three times on Instagram and you know, all of these things. And then you'll have, 
the cushy life that you're looking for and your business will boom and everything will be great. And that's not true. And so (laughs) it's not true. (laughs) So there are reasons that, uh, that we may say post at post at certain times, boost this one, post this amount of times do, but there are, but it's all strategy. There's strategy behind it. And so after closing and, uh, finding a fantastic rock to crawl under for a little while and stay there (laughs) until I kind of picked myself back up and said, God darn it, I'm going to figure out what in the world went wrong. Uh, Not until then did I realize that there is copywriting. Like as a business owner uh, for years doing marketing, believing in advertising, anybody who walked in and said, you know, i we've got this space uh, available for you. We're going to advertise and this is the graphic we're going to use. And I said, sure, great. Sounds good. Um, never did I go, it, who writes this stuff? What, what makes, what makes something good and what makes something not good and what mm-hmm. makes a return on investment and what doesn't and so on. And, um, and then I found copywriting. And so I really started to study that. I went through the Blackford Institute and, and found a real passion for copywriting and thought, this is, this is where it's at. This is where business owners are missing. The problem is then you get into, you, it's kind of a pendulum swing where copywriting is, uh, copywriting done I say copywriting done poorly, even though it may result in some return on investment, it's, it's copy paste copywriting. And so when you're copy pasting, there is science to it. That's the point of copywriting. And so you've got, you've got these lines that will you know, make people do whatever the call to action is, but that's mm-hmm. not really quality. It's still not quality. It's still not telling your story. So how do you marry the content writing, which is what I was doing, and copywriting, which is what I love now, to come together and make sure that your brand and your voice and, and who you are is really going out there in an effective way, which is how we found each other, kind of what we're talking about today. So yeah. that's the backstory. Okay. So if you had to explain to somebody, because I think the words copywriting, content, all this stuff, like they're thrown around like, like candy out in the online world. So if you were to explain to somebody, what is the difference between content and copywriting? Sure. What do those things mean to you? Mm -hmm. So content writing is, is a way of telling a story that someone is engaged and involved in, uh, That does not necessarily mean that somebody is is purchasing anything or opening their wallet or maybe even not uh, taking an action. It's it's a very – I love content writing, and I think that it's uh, a gift that that you can – a muscle that you can kind of work and exercise and get better at. Some people – just, I mean, if, if you're not a writer, hire this out, you know, you need to get someone who's, who's good to do it. But if you have some skill, you can work through content writing, uh, and get people to want to read what you're putting out there, whether that's in a graphic or a video, uh, mm-hmm. but it's telling a story around something. Then we have copywriting, which sole purpose is to sell something. So, uh, copywriting is designed scientifically to put all the words together in the right way and doing the doing the right thing and posting it at the right time and all of this in order to in order to sell the problem is that with copywriting if you're doing uh, you know scripts or like i said copy paste then you would have no idea if for the other 500 people who are copy pasting the same in order to get a sale, you you don't have followers. You don't have people who are engaged and excited to see what you have and purchase. They're just kind of doing it because there are certain things that scientifically our brains make us go, oh, I think I want to buy that. Oh, I better hurry up and do that. I, you know, that kind of thing. Content okay. writing is is the opposite. That's why it's important to have both as a business. Okay. I'm not, I mean, I totally understand what you're saying, but to a certain degree inside my head, my eyes are crossing because I'm like, I'm sorry. (laughs) We explain it, but I feel like um, 
they're just kind of so closely knit and related together. Very close. That it is hard to kind of separate them. So, right. I, feel like Which the- I, I don't think that you should. You know, I don't think that you should. But often, what happens a lot in, especially in social media marketing or when you're marketing yourself, your own business, uh, you may be writing content about, um, about your business or something that you're selling or, but, but if it's, but a copywriter really hones in on how to structure that so that it walks somebody through making a sale, doing a purchase, doing, having that action happen. Okay. So um, it's one thing to tell the story, which would be mm-hmm. the content. Mm-hmm. The copywriting is the strategic way that you share that story and lay that information out and, you know, and write verbiage and stuff. Right. Am I getting this? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That makes a little bit more sense to me, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, the, again, you can, content is everywhere. Content is everything. Everything that you're doing is, uh, is content we're not talking about whether or not it's good or effective. It's just content. It's just out there. Uh, And sometimes that's, sometimes that's perfectly fine. I have clients who say, I want, uh, I want this, these pages, these platforms built for um, my voice and for my business. And we're not trying to sell somebody something. We're not, we're, we're really not really even tapping into copywriting, but if you're trying to do that on your social media platforms and you're not familiar with copywriting, there are a lot of really good resources out there. I just encourage people, if I'm, if I'm going to talk about copy, especially if I'm teaching copy, don't go and find like, you know, the 25 best headlines and just start copy pasting them. That's, <laughs> that's bad copy. It's not good. Um, <laughs> Use those as reference and then make your voice and your tone come out, your business and and your purposes come out. Um, Use it as a framework. Don't go copy pasting. Yeah, I agree. I think um, we've moved away from this kind of generic sort of posting and and generalized information that the, the more you can add that personal touch and humanize it, like I like to use the word humanizing because We don't want to work with robots or a a page. We want to work with the people behind the page, behind the business. Um, So, yeah, if you were to go and find 25 best blah, blah, blahs, and you wanted to use something like that, like, there's nothing saying you couldn't, but add your own words, tell your own story for each of those 25 things, or, Mm -hmm. you know, break them out and, and somehow relate it to you and your business so that it doesn't look like something that somebody else has posted, right? Yeah, the, uh, the, the kind of kick that I'm on this year is, is your content mission statement. And that kind of goes back to what you were saying, uh, mm-hmm. goes back to the content mission statement. Is this something that uh, fits with, with the mission statement? I know we haven't really talked about that yet, but uh, is this something that fits my brand, my voice, my story? And uh, if it's not, I need to rewrite it or remake it to do that. And if it is great, post it. So if you were to take your branding off and the, and the information that said it is me, this is my stuff. Could you, yeah. could you even recognize it in, in a pile, you know, and um, forget about all of the people who are following you, you know, if you're copy pasting stuff or you're really not working to, to create this story around it and really working on your, on your content to be, uh, true to you and your business, mm-hmm. could you even recognize what's out there as your mm-hmm. own? Yeah, good point. Good point. Um, because, okay, so for those of you that don't know, we had a little bit of technical issues when we first hopped on. Um, but, you know, it's real life and we just do what we need to do. So uh, Rachel's actually tuning in from her phone and so she's not able to see everything. Um, but I've got a few people on live and uh, Marissa Kelly had said that uh, first she says, hi, hi. <laughs> Storytelling has personality and emotion. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and that's pretty much it does. Just- yeah. If you, you know, if, if I tell you quick, think of a blue tree. 
okay, I guess maybe I can come up with that. <laughs> but if I start walking you through the details of this gorgeous blue tree, then all of a sudden you can start to see it in your mind. You can start, you really have an understanding of what it is. And yeah. it's that, uh, it's that show don't tell that every author, every book coach, every, everyone will tell you mm-hmm. show don't tell. And we need to do that in our, in our content, even in our sales copy. Yeah. 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 You're right. Cause when you said picture blue tree, sometimes you picture, or I, anyways, immediately I thought of like a blue tree, just flat blue, like a sticker. But if you were to tell me more descriptively what that blue tree looked like or whatever, by the time you're done, it'll have like uh, bark on it, like a tree with grooves and, and designs in it. And the leaves will be a certain way and it'll have a specific shape. So that is the difference. Content is the blue tree sticker <laughs> and storytelling is making that blue tree 3D real life like you can reach out and touch it because now I have some sort of a motion like a an emotional connection or a more visual connection. Would mm-hmm. they be the same? Yeah, for sure. It takes it, it it gets us out of that fact, black and white, fact based uh mentality to have to create something in our mind and to create a picture in our mind. And that is what we want to do when we're bringing people through uh, the sales process, through the engagement process, through the following process is to, is to really have that. It creates the buy-in, you know, if you create, if, if I'm telling you about this blue tree and you're creating it in your own mind, that gives you buy-in into my blue tree. (laughs) So, uh, so much more than if I just said, look at, I have this fantastic blue tree. You, you're going to want it. You should have it. It's, yeah. it's, everybody loves it. <laughs> you're like, well, okay, maybe. <laughs> well, but once you've explained to me why everybody loves it and um, I have a better visualiz- visualization of what it is and how it can help me or why, it, why the blue tree, tree even fucking matters, <laughs> right? it'll be a lot more memorable. So whether For I sure. purchase or do anything with it at that moment, later on, I might, something might make me re remember the blue tree and then I'm going to associate that with you. Right. Forever. Now yeah, this yeah. conversation is going to be the, blue, the, yeah, the, I know. Like, um, every episode is like the one about blah, blah, blah. This one's going to be like, <laughs> right. Start about the blue tree. Right. <laughs> I don't know why I always go back to a blue tree, but this is like the third or fourth time I've said it. So I'm going to have like, I'm that's going to end up being my thing is sometime. <laughs> I think I better get off the blue tree or else. No, I oh yeah. It's... Rachel. She's the one that talks about the blue tree. Well, I think it works because like, well, it's kind of like Adam Sandler. I drew the duck blue. Cause I've never seen a blue duck. <laughs> like in uh, Billy Madison or whatever. Right. When you say a blue tree, like, you really have to stop and think about it because mm-hmm. a blue tree isn't something. Yep. <laughs> I, love it, I love it. Okay. So tell me a little bit more about this content mission statement. Um, okay. It briefly, what is it? And um, I guess how can we kind of create our own content? Sure. Why is it important? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, man, that's such a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go through it as quickly as I can. Uh, <laughs> So here's the thing about a content mission statement. Whether you're creating your own content, you have it outsourced, or you have a creative team, it doesn't matter. Everybody has to have a content mission statement because what happens is sometimes we sit around and we go, what in the world am I going to write about? Or what content am I going to produce? Or we're online and we're scrolling and we're thinking, my goodness, this video is going viral and everybody is sharing it. And you start posting stuff that doesn't matter at all. And because it's you're not in the popularity train, right? Like you're just you trying, are. To, you're you trying are. to get the reach and the engagement and whatever. Cause like, that's what you're supposed to have on your page. Yeah, you are. Now, if we take this into, if we, if we kind of make our social media pages a uh, person and we think about the, our friends that maybe we've got some friends that are kind of scatterbrained and they just, they love every trend that's out there and they're, they're, getting on this one and getting on this one. And then they're adding you to this group and adding you to this group. And one day they're into this and the next day they're into this. And every single time they're into it, it's new and exciting and fantastic. And we should be a part of it. How many of those are you really a part of? Uh, How, you know, you, you kind of after a little while go, well, 
we'll just wait and see what she does next. You know, <laughs> you start to tune it out, right? Now, yeah, you do. You tune it out. Now, there's also a friend who is uh, really passionate about about something and uh, and feels excited and passionate and happy, but then switches over to uh, angry and sullen and sad and frustrated, and then mm-hmm. maybe switches back. Do you? How much buy-in do you put into those, that person and what they're, if, if they, if you need advice or you need an opinion, are you going to them? Probably not you, because they're swinging and you're not really sure where, where the stable line is. And if our pages are like that, whether it's, oh, this is so great because it's viral today, but it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about or who I am or my mm-hmm. business or, um, you're really excited, but then you're frustrated the next day. And so the posting changes completely. Uh, Both of those, when it's time for you to ask for anything, when it's time for you to ask for sales, when it's time for you to get recommendations, when it's time for you to get clients, when it's time for you to get people engaged in your, um, in any contests or anything like that, it just kind of sends in a little like, "Mm, this, I don't know if this is, you know, I don't want to know if I want to be a part of this. <laughs> right. Okay. The content mission statement takes all of that and really brings it back to who am I? What am I trying to sell? What am I trying to do? Uh, what services? How am I going to change the world with whatever it is that this page is about? Mm-hmm. And it also brings in, in in voice. So your tone can change. Uh, you know, I don't post the exact same thing on Twitter as I post on Facebook and Instagram. Those things change. There may be uh, tone differences or emojis added, or certainly it's different if you're posting on LinkedIn and so on. So tones can be different, right. but your voice is the same. It's the same person it's the same statements um uh, the same out of the same mission statement Mm -hmm. so the way that I build this I have a uh a downloadable pdf with 10 questions and five uh sort of tips one of those is be human humanize it like we were talking about and uh going through those 10 will help you to get a big picture and shape the narrative of whatever business you are or whatever you're trying to portray. Uh, and then those five pieces are more about shaping the voice and what, what to do about that. Now you take all of those, when I'm working with a client, I, I do this over the phone and I'm writing notes and it usually ends up to be about 2000 words that I, that I'm typing out and doing, um, when I'm first taking them on so that I can have the full picture. And then from there, we shave, I shave it down to about three sentences and three sentences is the mission statement of, of content. And though that statement may change as your business grows or evolves, which is completely fine, Mm -hmm. uh, you stick to that for the time that it is for the time that it's present and relevant, Uh, or you give it to your creative team and they stick to it. So you look at the mission statement. Does it fit? Perfect. Let's post it. Does it fit? No, it doesn't. Let's pitch it and go back to the drawing table. Right. And I love this because when you had mentioned that to me, um, I had said, like, I feel like I talk to a lot of people that sometimes aren't sure what they should be posting or whatever on the page when they find something. And my first piece of advice is, well, does it feel like it fit? Like, does it feel good? Does it feel like it fits? your business, like, you know, and so having something like a content mission statement, like you said, a simple three sentences that every time you see something, you refer to that and go, okay, does it meet these requirements? You know, does it, whatever, does it, does it show what's unique or beneficial to working with me? Um, Does it fit my voice? Is it, you know, going to help to evoke the right emotions that I want people to have, like those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Suddenly it's like, okay, yes, yes, yes. Awesome. I will use it. And if it doesn't fit, then walk away. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like it, it is better <laughs> to it is better to go back to the drawing table than to just throw stuff up there. You really want your followers to be familiar with who you are. And there's no way to do that other than consistency. Consistency in your voice, in your message, in your yeah, in your posting. But if you're if you are inconsistent in your 
voice and your message in order to be consistent in your posting, you're still all jumbled up and that doesn't, there's no strategy involved in moving this forward. So yes, yes. it's really moved more towards quality instead of quantity, you know, make sure that if you're not able to post like every single day, I've, I've been telling people, I'm like, if, if you're just going to post crap every single day, don't <laughs> post crap. Take the time and post something really good at least once every two days then or something like that. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, it is garbage. I, right now. Like the yeah. new algorithm doesn't do you any justice either. So. It doesn't, you know, it's, I think that often as business owners, we, I certainly am a list checker. I really like to, you know, make the list, check it off. Oh, I'm, I did it. I'm good. You know? Um, and I think that our <laughs> content, <laughs> and, <laughs> I think our content in our social media can be that way. You know, don't, don't be a list checker on the social media and our content. Just don't do it. Just pitch it or, you know, message Brooke and say, I don't know what the heck to post. (laughs) I'm totally stuck. Well, and I feel like I just actually had a really great conversation with um, a business owner and one of their employees yesterday. And a lot of people do, they get stuck on what to post, but I I just sit with them and I start saying, okay, like, tell me about you and your business. Tell me what you do. And by the time we're done, we have like pages Mm -hmm. of stuff. It's like, sometimes you got to remove yourself a little bit. Especially yeah. if you're a business owner, you got to kind of remove yourself and be like, okay, from the outside perspective, what makes us stand out? What are mm-hmm. we good at? You know, and a lot of times it's the people and it's the customer service. Like, mm-hmm. especially when you find yourself in a market where you have competitors and there's other people that offer the same products and services mm-hmm. as you, you need to share the story of who you are and what makes you unique. And a lot of times it's, the people you deal with and the customer service, right? Services are services. I can buy a brick from store A or I can buy a brick from store B. Mm -hmm. But if I feel like I have a better relationship with the people at store A, I will go out of my way and drive across town to store A. Or you don't, do you know what I mean? Every time. Yeah, for sure. Totally. And so that's why this totally fits into this conversation about storytelling and sharing that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, just sharing some of the everyday things that happen to you in your business. That's your story. Mm -hmm. Right. We forget. We do doors and they're like, Oh my God, I just love coming into you. Or, you know, thank you so much for going above and beyond. We, we forget that stuff because it's like, we do it because we want to, and we don't do it necessarily for like marketing purposes, but sure. But when you're telling a story, that stuff needs to come into play and be like, this time when this client said this and this is why, and mm-hmm. you know, we're proud of that. Yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's really important and it, it brings people in and um, yeah, I, I agree with all of that for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So you said one of your goals with anything you do aside from creating a content mission statement and kind of compared to that is like people need to be familiar with you and your brand. So I think we've kind of covered that a little bit with um, people will become familiar with you by the consistency of how you speak to them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. When you're all over the place, it's hard to kind of pinpoint who you are, what you stand for. But if you're solid in your messaging, Mm -hmm. regardless of how good the messaging is, (laughs) (laughs) if you're solid in it, then people understand who you are. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it takes a little bit. Oh, I'm hearing an echo now. Do you hear an echo or are we good? Um, I'm not hearing anything. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> um, all my technical <laughs> issues today, I don't understand, but um, yeah, people live. So if anybody can hear some feedback, just let us know, please. <laughs> Hopefully it'll just, it'll come in and out. So uh, oh, I think we're good already. Anyway, sorry about that. That's I'm fun. I'm on edge, techie on edge now because, <laughs> <laughs> because of all the issues earlier. But um. Oh, what was I going to say? It's okay. This might, this might spur it. So Marissa says, once I started to share my story, in addition to the stats and the value, um, it helped me resonate with people. Thank you. That did bring it back. (laughs) That's yes. What I was going to say is that, uh, is that this is a longer term. This isn't get 10,000 followers and 3,000 engagements and, you know, 24 hours or something. Yeah. This is long-term get to know me, build something. And it's not that 
it's you're going to go from no storytelling to storytelling and then you're waiting five years and then somebody finally sees you you know uh, there are it is going to be pieces uh Mm -hmm. coming in but if you are if you're looking for solid growth that that does what we're talking about it's not um it's not a get quick. You're not, it, it isn't. And you're not totally, you are focused on analytics. I don't want to say you're not focused on analytics because I study those, but you're not focused on those to tell you whether or not what your, if your story is important because you are already solidified in this is the narrative of the company. This is what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And things may change as, you know, you are listening to your audience and they may want to see more behind the scenes or they may want to see more of this or that kind of thing. But who you are does not change by analytics. It doesn't change. Yeah. So it, it's more of a long term process. Exactly. Um, Thank you, uh, Rochelle Anderson, for for piping in and saying too that it is a marathon, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and I and I do I totally am empathetic to business owners who sit back and they're so busy because like most business owners have so many hats that they juggle to begin, and when they sit back and they're like, oh my god, like how am I supposed to share a story every day or how am I supposed to do this or that? Like, I get it, um, and we always want something to work fast, right? We're like in this world where things are so instantaneous. It's like, well, I want to post something and I want people to buy my stuff and I want people to come in. Like, but it really is something that you have to build on. And I come from like a traditional marketing world. Like I've spent time um, in newspaper sales and print sales. And I spent time in um, radio, digital sales with the radio station stuff too. And all this stuff takes time like to build your brand, right? But at the end of the day, one of the reasons why I get so excited about social media is right now your investment is your time. And you might have to like hire somebody to come in and help you along the way or whatever. But where else can you connect with people on such a level, visually, emotionally, um, verbally, on any other medium that gets like, that gets you the reach or the potential reach or the results that social media does. Right. And it is always more intimate than any other form of advertising that you can do because it is in their own space. There are no, we all have, we all have walls and faces we put up and all of that stuff. You know, if we're going to walk out of our door and somebody approaches us to tell us about their business or selling or whatever, our walls are up every time and we're filtering that information differently than filtering it in the comfort of our own home in our the palm of our hand it's it's always you always are breaking through more barriers through social media to get your message out to somebody than you would in any other form of marketing or advertising outside of the the intimacy of their inbox their their apps their phone yeah and i feel like from a consumer's point of view, it's because I feel like I have more control, right? If I don't like what you're saying, I just mute you, delete you, <laughs> scroll by you, like, right? But when you're in a, when you walk into a physical brick and mortar store and you've got that annoying salesperson <laughs> that follows you around and like eyeballing <laughs> you and like, you know, like that, that weirdness, like you just want to walk out of the store and shake the weirdness off and like, <laughs> if you want to do any business with anybody, you know? Yeah. I just, yeah. I think we are able to touch on way more of the five senses um, to create that emotional connection on, well, I love video for one. And so, mm-hmm. and right now yeah. so on every platform, so like of social media, video is just killing it. So yep. like, I, I always tell everybody, I challenge you to tell me another way where I can do something like this, that that's not on social media. And you really can't. Yeah. So, so if you're not there yet, you freaking need to be. <laughs> yeah. right? It's time. It's it's way past time. <laughs> I, know, I, know, yeah. I know. Yeah. Do so, it for sure. Um, I want to go back at, a little bit to when you were running your brick and mortar store. Um, I feel like sometimes maybe the brick and mortar store business type people have a little bit more more difficult time. I guess trying to figure out how they can share their story 
um, and kind of get out of that traditional marketing mindset where we're blasting all the time. This is on sale and look at, you know, Mm -hmm. like that kind of stuff. So tell me when you were running your own business, you kind of learned by doing so like, what were some of the things that you learned early on or maybe a little bit later on that allowed you to three X your memberships over the course of a year, right? Cause yep. membership is a monthly reoccurring payment. That's a little yep. bit commitment from people. So, yep. so share with us a little bit of what you learned. Sure. Uh, what really is effective in that um, what I did, what I did right before I started listening to um, and buying into all the things I did wrong yeah. was, uh, was I was, I was constantly telling that story of, um, of the testimonials of the people who were, who loved it and, uh, had the memberships. I was without, without, so come get yours today. You know, I mean, just like, just really telling the, the story, being excited, having, uh, I was doing contests, not, not get in this contest for sharing something or whatever, but like, uh, you know, this, this is the contest that is, is running right now. And then really celebrating with those winners, uh, posting often about how amazing everyone else is, who is coming in here, who is part of this, who, uh, who is joining or has a birthday or just anything constantly posting about someone else's greatness. Yeah. Sharing the story Uh, with the people that you are working with. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the business. No, the, you know, the, the voice and the tone and the, the statement was wrapped around us wanting, you know, me wanting to lift up those people who were, uh, who are part of this and in a membership and encourage them and all of that. It wasn't, Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't about telling why the business wants to encourage you. It was just constantly showing and adding that value to people's lives and encouraging and, mm-hmm. and so on. So, um, so I what think- was kind of the tipping point for you then, because like, I'm sure in the beginning you were, you were trying everything. You were doing sales and buy one, get one and like whatever else you were to get people in the door. What was kind of the tipping point for you where you realized, Hey, it's, it's a little bit more about the storytelling or sharing of other people's stories that's working for me and not this other stuff. I don't know. Do you remember that moment? Well, I, uh, there was a couple different things that happened. One was, um, I am, I've always kind of, I've always written, I was doing ghost writing and different things like that on the side anyways, uh, while I owned those businesses. And so I've, uh, the concept of, of writing and how to, uh, show and not tell and, and adding value was already something that was sort of ingrained in me. So I, I started out that way, uh, kind of loving on everyone who was already there and then, and then building it, you know, from there. And I think what, I think what I did was opposite where I went, where I went, I kind of went, look, everybody thinks I'm so amazing. Let me find more people to think I'm amazing. <laughs> and, uh, and went into, now we're going to sell stuff. Now we're adding this. Now we're doing this. If they think that's amazing, watch this and we're going to do this. And um, again, just started. That means I need advertising. That means I need reach. That means I need marketing. That means all of this stuff. And then, and then the real core coreness the value of what I was giving at the beginning fell off because I was so focused on no this is how you have to run this business so it kind of worked opposite for me Mm -hmm. um and yeah because I started the wrong way first and learning the right way you started off the right way and then allowed other people to influence you and then realized yeah you know I I I realized well part of it is that I realized, well, you can't run a business like this. I can't just run a business with, you know, these people, um, liking everything, you know, liking everything that we're doing or reading it or subscribing to the newsletter. We need more people, more memberships. And so what do I do about that? Oh, well, this guy says that if I put a business card sized graphic on the back of the you know menu, yeah. then, you know, 50 more people will come in next quarter. So that's what I need to do. And if I can do it that way, then I'll do it this way and this way and this way. And it just kind of spiraled out yeah. of control from there. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think that's so relatable. I don't know if anybody that's watching or listening live or the replay, I think we can all relate to that. We've, I know I have a story to share. So when I first got started, like I came from, I, I've come from this marketing background. So like I understand about how to connect with people or get in front of people. When you're a new business, you're like, I don't care about like the quality of the connections right now. I just need to be getting in front of people. So I designed a kick-ass like brochure and got it printed and it wasn't just a regular brochure. It actually had a pop out in the center. Oh. And so I had to sit down with this box of, I can't remember how many, I think I ordered like 500 with scissors in the living room, cutting into these pop outs and making them pop out or whatever. And by the time I was done, I didn't even send the brochures out in the mail. Because <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't feel right or whatever. Like I just you I were got, over it. I got caught up in the moment, you know, and then or something changed and then they weren't right. And then I didn't feel 100% confident in sending them out. And it's just, but that's just my story of how like I got caught up in what yeah. everybody else does. Everybody else has yep. mail outs and this and that. Yeah. I need to do it too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. I did. I did, you know, design my own brochure, had brochure, of course, the business cards, had T-shirts, had uh, oh, just everything, every kind of advertising out there, did some digitally uh, social media marketing, uh, like paperclip, a click and things like that were uh, really starting to boom at the time. So it was just it was I, I did radio media, advertising, all kinds of things. And what worked was going back to the roots of putting out killer content that people wanted to engage in, wanted to share, wanted to be part of and let them do it for you. And yeah. now I do, you know, I work both ways where there is, there, there are times where it's great to do the advertising, where it's great to do, uh, you know, the, the ads and the landing pages and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. but it's got to start with really good content. Well, and I was just going to say, like, don't get me wrong. All of these other things are fantastic and have mm -hmm. price. But for some reason, when we go to do that, we get so caught up in how that, let's just pick on print, for example, like how that print ad has to be like, it's a sale, it's this, it's that. We get away from the core, which is us trying to share the story and building the connections that way. And we get into their old, like traditional advertising mindset, right? Yeah. So I, sure. I feel like, you know, radio could also, um, it, it's got the visual, like the audio, like you can emotionally connect with people that way by sharing a story. Um, you can use the visual access of print or a, a, a billboard or something to connect, but it all has to come back to that story, right? Like, yeah, it all yeah. comes back to the content. What? what's the story? What's the, what is the goal? Are you streamlined everywhere? Are you on point everywhere? If you're doing print and you're doing radio and you're doing social media, yes. does everyone know that, that it's you without all of your stuff? Well, is it the same message? Yeah. You, is it the same? Is it, is it still surprised. you? You'd be so surprised that I, I work know. with people that have one sale over here and a different sale over there or whatever. And they think that because they're trying to like reach as many people and touch as many points as they can, that it's all going to drive back to one point, but it doesn't. It yeah. Confused and or outsourcing. I'm going to outsource my website to this, per to, to India. I'm going to outsource my, you know, my blogging to this person. I'm going to outsource my social media to this high schooler and it's going to be good because everything comes together and I'm told that I can, you know, check off my list as my, as a business owner and make sure that of course I've got a website on, I've got blogs going, I've got social media running and it's yep. all crap, you know, and none of it comes back together to, to move forward who you are in this very noisy space that we're in, mm -hmm. in businesses and marketing. You've got to cut through all of that and, as we talked about before, either you're going to compete with the noise and you're just going to yell louder and more often, or you're going to be different and it's going to matter. It's going to matter. Yeah, exactly. I, and, and I, and I thank you so much for coming on and at least even talking about this whole, um, the content mission statement, because 
all this stuff we're talking about, like if you, if you knew exactly what that was, um, really it gives you the confidence and the ability to stand up so that when, when an opportunity does come your way and they're like, Hey, there's this opportunity for you to market or advertise here. You can be like, okay, does it fit all these things? Yes, it does. Oh, great. Okay. How can I make sure that my message that I'm putting on that medium is also following my content mission statement, right? Yep, exactly. And not just, yeah. it just naturally allow you to be consistent and, and way more powerful. Yeah. And whether you're a startup or you've been around forever, now is the time to get this together. Structure, put the architecture together of your, of your mission statement. Get this, take some time to really get this handled and then launch it or relaunch it from there. Yes, exactly. So um, Rachel is fantastic in the fact that she has this um, download or, or I can't remember exactly what it's called, but let me just look here. What do you copy that converts, what you need to know to write better copy. And I love the fact that you have this on your website for free. Like I didn't even have to give you my email address. To no. get it. <laughs> I have no strings attached. I won't ask, I won't ask for anything from you. You can just download it and take it Absolutely. away. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to post in the comments. Um, let's see if I can do it live. I don't think I can. I think I have to wait until it's done. But I will post the link to her website where you can find that and you can grab that because that will help you by going through those questions, um, coming up with your content mission statement and helping you feel just a little bit more solid um, on who you are and how you want to represent yourself. And you know what, I've actually invested a lot of time and money in that this year, 2018 is like my year to like, really get clear on who I am and how I want to work with people. Mm -hmm. And honestly, since doing some of that, like I have, I have like, my brand information on the wall here, mm -hmm. I look at it. And if I'm writing an email, or I'm, you know, trying to sell myself or whatever, I look at that, and I make sure that it fits. And it just feels so much better. I just yeah. You know? Yeah. It's also helpful. I know for me, it's helpful when I'm scrolling through my feed and I'm seeing all of the noisemakers <laughs> out there yeah. and I see all, all of their, their posts about how fantastic they, you know, their, their businesses are, or their ROI is or whatever coming back to, but I'm missional. I, I know what's going on. It's not that you're, that you're, doing it for at the sake of profit. I mean, that's not, you're not losing profit because you're, you're being missional in your content, but you are, it is more of a long, it's longevity. It's more of a long term. You will stand out in the crowd mm -hmm. better and, and certainly longer than all the noisemakers that you see all the time on social media. And so for me, it's even a, ni a nice thing to have that anchor uh, with all the noise going on out there. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's times where you need to have a quick sale and you might, mm -hmm. depending on what your business is, you might have some of those products that are um, like low entry products or just like kind of like a no thought needed, right? Oh, I like that. I'm going to buy it, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, so there's going to be times where you do quick sale type stuff like that mm -hmm. as part of your business. Yeah. But if we focus more on building the relationships so that we are communicating with these people back and forth, getting to know what they want. Like they actually tell us like your clients and customers will tell you what they want more of from you mm -hmm. and you can help them. And um, the online world allows us to be who we want to be like to, to basically represent ourselves, however we want to be represented. Mm -hmm. So make sure that it's exactly the way uh, what they see online is exactly who they deal with in person. For right. sure. Yeah, absolutely. If you're, if, if you're a brick and mortar store, being consistent in-house online, uh, again, it's consistency across the board. And, uh, and just, you know, just quickly as sort of a, I guess, just sort of an example with my business model, I get asked all the time, do you have courses to sell? Do you have, uh, how much do you charge for reviewing you know, my copy, all, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, the email address, you know, do you, 
make sure that you ha- get the capture the email address if you're going to give away something free. And I'm not saying that you can't do any of that. There, I've taken courses. There are really good ones out there. But my business, part of my content mission statement is I will add value to anybody who wants to see it, who needs it, who will listen to it uh, for completely, for totally free. I make my money from uh, working with clients who want me to just do the whole thing. Uh, Everybody else who is trying to learn it, do it on their own or who, you know, can't afford me or don't want to work with me, just like, (laughs) just want to hear what I have to say. Um, All of that is free. And so yet I'm the sole provider of our, our family of five. I, you know, work from home. I have great clients. I was still able to achieve what all of the noisemakers are saying. You have to do those other things to achieve uh, without doing them. And so I just want to encourage all the business owners out there that if you really feel strongly about, I want to do it differently, or I want to do it this way, or I don't want to be just throwing out social media stuff to just be able to um, have followers or make those sales. I want to do this a different way Mm -hmm. that we're not saying you're going to sacrifice money or a lifestyle or the passions that you have about your business. We're saying you can do it differently and you can do it well and you can still end up the same. You know, it's the guy who speeds past you and you both end up at the stoplight. So (laughs) <laughs> it's just, it's, it's be encouraged that it's okay. If you feel like I, if any of this is resonating with you and you want to try to rework your, your mission statement or rework your content mm-hmm. that you're not going to lose out in the end. We're not talking about losing out or uh, we're just talking about going, going through it the right way and going through yeah. it well. Well, at the very basic level, even just understanding that um, every time you post, it should have or it should align with you in the way that you want it to, even just telling yourself that would, you won't even realize it. But if you ask that your question to yourself, every time you're posting something, by the time you've been posting something for a couple weeks or a couple months, you'll look back and you'll see that everything you've posted has been in a line with, you know, and, and gravitating and pushing people over to the end result naturally, because that's what you have in your mind as you're doing it. Um, if you're feeling scatterbrained and all over the place and not sure what to do and literally just like posting something because oh my god I haven't posted it then that's what you get Mm -hmm. right like Mm -hmm. so I mean it can be as simplistic as that or it can Mm -hmm. be as depth as you know spending hours really diving down and getting to understand that so Mm -hmm. start with wherever you're comfortable yep (laughs) the whole point of the conversation is just like be aware of it and just know that there is a better way (laughs) Yep. <laughs> oh, I feel like it's a better way. Um, so yeah, I think I think we went over most of the points that we really talked about um, through and everything else. But um, one takeaway, one key takeaway: what are the famous last words of <laughs> Blackmore? <laughs> Oh, the blue tree story. The blue tree. I guess I have, right. Oh yeah. man, you know. Yeah, I honestly though I would say that the the big takeaway from my experience having brick and mortar stores to running a digital agency now and and helping just clients in between and business owners in between mm-hmm. is uh to 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 know who you are in your business, the purpose of your business and what your goals are to really, really, really know those. Um, there are too many, there's too many noise makers. There's too many people walking in your door selling you advertisements. There's too many things going on mm-hmm. for you to, as a business owner, you know, throw money at everywhere. And if you can really hone in on, what in the world am I even doing? <laughs> and why am I doing it? What do, what am I supposed to be doing yeah. here? Um, you can say no to things, no matter how shiny they are or what the sales pitch is. You can, you can know that that's not, that doesn't align with me. Uh, and the more you do that, the more you'll be able to portray that, you know, in, in all of your content and, yeah. and everything that you do. And the flip side of that coin is if something comes your way and you want to say yes to it, then you, you know can, it. You can make it work 
to you yep. in the way that you actually want it to work for you. Yeah. Doing something going, well, that didn't work, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, either way, you know, uh, but. It, it's very hard to be a business owner and know and be making decisions. These decisions are big. They're big for your family. They're big for your employees, your business. I mean, this is a hard thing to do. And uh, if you can hone in and find that anchor for your business, for yourself, for your content, mm-hmm. then you can start, then you can really know, you know, how to, how to move forward from there. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, I hope that those that joined us today love it too. Um, Thank you so much for for the few that have joined with us today and have participated in the conversation. Um, We were, when we talked earlier about uh, Rachel's free marketing stuff, you can find that at, uh, thank you, Marissa, for doing that, blackmoremarketingsolutions.com underneath the tab of free resources, I believe. So go ahead and check that out. Um, I looked at the, the content the one of the, the way to mm-hmm. create content, but there's a couple other resources there too, that people um, can stumble upon and see if it works for them. Right. Um, yep. Questions for myself or Rachel after as well, like feel free to comment below. Um, and of course, you know, what does Landon always say? Smash the, the smash the heart button. Like, <laughs> let us know, right. Let us know you like this, let us know you enjoyed it. Um, I'm always looking for new and awesome people to talk with too, like Rachel. So, connect with me. Um, you could be on the creative coffee cafe and, uh, we'll follow up with anybody that has any questions. Oh, just a second. What do we see here? Does anybody have, Oh, any questions? Oh my goodness. My comments are all screwed up here for a second. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So Marissa says, have a great day. You too. Thank you You so much. Um, and then Rochelle says, great topic ladies. Thank you so much for the good info. (laughs) Thank you. I do feel like it was very good. So, Anyways, that's it. That was episode seven. Uh, Thanks so much for joining me today. We'll say goodbye to everybody else and I'll follow up with you here um, and wrap things up. So have a wonderful day, everybody. Go out and create good stuff. Right. Be one of the good guys. (laughs) We're cheering you on. (laughs) Be a good human and uh, share your story because what feels like mundane, regular stuff to you is what people want to hear and what people want to know in order for you to build those relationships. Yeah. All right. Love it. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.